This meeting of the Yazoo City Council will now come to order, and the chair calls on the city clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris? Here. Williams? Here. Avery? Here. Eccles? Here. Stewart? Here. Councilman Cannon is absent today. Councilman Reed? Here. We have a quorum present. The meeting is open for business, and I'll ask everyone to stand, and Carter Raines will come forward and lead the invocation. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Dear Lord, um, help us to be safe and not to get hurt. Amen. 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 First, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Where are you go? <laughs> We're happy to have Troop 777 with us today. Uh, we'll give you an opportunity to ask, ask, ask any questions you would like at the end of the meeting. We can just otherwise just uh, just enjoy the fun. Yeah. The Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the work session and council meeting on July the 12th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. Chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of the account for the week of July the 8th through the 14th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion ca carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations, Mayor. Unfinished business, we have none today. Items 9 through 15, this is a time and place is advertised to conduct public hearings, allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of resolutions, assessing nuisance abatement liens against the property. This is for grass cutting that has been performed and we have six locations. I'm going to read the addresses and names and anyone who wishes to speak about any of these may come forward. Number nine is 1331 Alabama Street, $886. State of Alabama Property, property Tax Division, Strategic Muni Funding, LLC. Number 10 was 501 East Chestnut, which has been paid by the owner. 1507 Garfield Avenue, $211, Tina Cox. 317 Bryan Street in District 6, 211 Susan Owen, 2219 Forest Avenue in District 6, 211 Virginia Gullsby, 304 Kaiser Street in District 6, State of Alabama Property Tax Division in Eddie B. Collins, 2309 Scenic Drive in District 7, $241, State of Alabama Property Tax Division, Brad and Amanda Howard. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to any of these resolutions? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Chair will entertain a motion to adopt all six resolutions. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt all six resolutions, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt all six. Our final public hearing is a resolution approving the issuance of an alcoholic beverage license. Gifts on Wings, LLC, has applied for an off-premises only retail table wine license at 2401 Rainbow Drive. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone wish to speak in favor of it? Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. 17 is a resolution appointing member to the Harrison Architectural Review Board. 
This appoints Carol Norman for the term expiring September the 15th, 2013. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? I'd just like to say thank you for people who serve on these boards. They're non-monetary uh, boards, and uh, the, the people step up and give their time and uh, talents to these boards. We just appreciate them doing it. Any other discussion? Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Uh, Those opposed, <clears throat> motion carries to adopt. 18 is a resolution authorizing agreement with SNME. This agreement is an effort to combine several agreements for monitoring services at the landfills and transfer stations in the amount of $71,050. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? I, I think we discussed this last week, and I, I, I had some questions, but okay. I didn't get a chance to discuss it upstairs. I know we're combining all these contracts, uh, and we're going from, tell me that again, how are we doing this? Is, 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 this, is the separate contractors going to be doing this on the one contract or what? Tell me again. Now, you've got one um, professional firm that will be doing different services. Um, there's mostly what this covers is gas and stormwater monitoring that's required by ADEM at those sites. All the previous contracts were separated by location and by that service. This just combines it because one company is doing it anyway. So just from a bookkeeping standpoint, it makes it that much easier for us. So this is one company that was doing several different things? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Is, is this just the... Uh is this an, the active landfills or the ones that are closed? No, this, this includes both. This is the C&D landfill, which is active in East Gadsden, and the closed and landfill, closed uh, okay. sanitary landfill on the mountain. We, we, we had a contract with another engineering firm at one time on the closed landfill. Did that, that finally ran out, I guess? Mm -hmm. Engineering services or something out of Birmingham, I remember. Okay. That was before yes, your time, bro. Yes, sir. It was before my time, but I'm being informed that it's, that's correct. Okay. You might exchange, uh, explain to our yeah. scouts exactly what you were talking about in the way of landfill. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, what the Department of Environmental Management requires the city to do is to um, monitor stormwater that, that leaves off the site from these stormwater sites to make sure that drinking water is okay and to make sure that there's not a lot of contaminants in the water as well as is gas. There's um, uh, these landfills get buried um, and uh, what they can do is underneath they, they create methane gas and won't go too much into it but it can be explosive so they have to monitor those levels to make sure that um, that it yeah that there's no hazards that's right let me, let me see if I can help a little bit too Chad I, yes sir please uh, the president said <laughs> <laughs> they might not even know what the landfill is that's why we take our household garbage and, and trash and dump it into this this landfill and prior to uh, I forget what year subtitle D came into effect uh, but anyway we Prior to that, we used to just go find a hole somewhere and, and just put all the garbage and trash in there and cover it up with dirt. And all of that trash and stuff seeped into our, our water our water table. And then the guys in Washington saw fit to put in a subtitle D. And now you have to put a lining into a landfill. You just can't go find a hole somewhere and dump the trash. You got to put a liner in there. It's almost like a swimming pool now. So it keeps that leach and all that stuff from getting into our uh, surface water and but we're responsible for the old landfills to monitor those to make sure that that stuff don't get into our well water and stuff and our drinking water so that's basically what he's talking about here so we have to monitor that but it also creates gas as he said so hopefully that's a little bit better explanation about what a landfill is with all that garbage and stuff like that it's a mess anyway yeah it's a mess <laughs> 
19 is a resolution accepting it. We need to vote. We had voted. We hadn't voted yet. <laughs> vote. <laughs> Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Okay, 19 is a resolution accepting conveyance of property at 2220 Hill Avenue. Jerry Collier has offered to donate this property to the city in lieu of further nuisance abatement proceedings. The city will have to pay the Alabama Department of Revenue to redeem. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 20 is a resolution authorizing satisfaction of a lien against property at 1546 Rose Street. Laura Benson has offered to pay $300 to satisfy the city's lien on the property. Chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. 21 is a resolution requesting restriction on alcohol advertising. In an effort to discourage underage drinking, this urges businesses to display advertisements for alcoholic beverage at least five feet from the floor of the building where they are not visible from outside the business and where they're not visible. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Mr. President, I think the young man who brought this to our attention is here. I don't know if he... He's going to speak, he's I believe. He's going to speak later? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if he wants to say anything at this point. Okay. Well, I mean, if you want him to speak now... No, that's okay. He can, do, he can do it later. Okay. This is not something that uh, is uh, a law that we are requiring this. It's a suggestion that, uh, from the city and encouraging everybody to follow these guidelines on the advertisement. Okay. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. New business, is there any new business? Yes, Mr. President, I have a couple of items uh, <laughs> to bring up under new business. If I may, I'd like to read them all. I mean, there, there are a couple of different topics, but I'd like to read them all and then uh, uh, collectively bring them up for consideration. Okay. Um, first item is uh, legal document 2011-270 uh, uh, authorizing uh, change order number three to bid number 320 for the Albert Raines uh, Boulevard Riverfront Enhancement Project in the amount of uh, $6,786 $6, $6, bringing the uh, total contract price after the change order to $715,169.16. The second item uh, is uh, item number 2011-272, authorizing acceptance of uh, $337.34 for satisfaction of uh, nuisance abatement liens on the on property located at 2415 and 2417 Hollis Street in, uh, in District 2. Second item, uh, the third item, I'm sorry, is 2011-266, authorizing agreement with the Alabama Department of Transportation for infrastructure improvements at Euro Brown Elementary School. Uh, the grant amount is 60602 and uh, the project is 100% funded through the state Safe Routes to School program. And uh, the final one is, uh, is of course, uh, akin to uh, that, that, uh, that item in that it... Uh, sets aside uh, a budget item for receipt of the grant. So again, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, consider these today. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider the three resolutions and the one ordinance today, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt them all four. Second. Is there any further discussion? Clerk, you take the vote. 
Those in favor to adopt the three resolutions in one ordinance, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt all four items. Is there any other new business? Yes, Mr. President, I have two items that, uh, that I would like to introduce for consideration today, for unanimous consent to consider today. Um, first document, these are two documents, and they're both related to the same thing, so I'll read both documents and ask for consideration. Uh, a resolution authorizing approval to apply for the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice System Grant uh, in the amount of $27,593. And the other one is authorizing a memorandum of understanding between the City of Gadsden and, and Itawah County that this money will be used for the City of Gadsden and not, Itawah County will not be included. Second. Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to consider both resolutions today, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. 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 Any further discussion? <coughs> yes, sir. Um, this is uh, money that the police department, um, a grant that the police department will be applying for that will enable them to get portable cameras so that police officers on patrol will be able to record uh, live any situation that they're in once they, once they leave the vehicle. These are for portable um, cameras so they can recall <coughs> everything that happens outside <coughs> of the police vehicle. Okay. And that's most of the Can I discuss something? Too? Yeah, go ahead and discuss it. Okay. I'm, you know, uh, it's my understanding that uh, these cameras are going to run uh, for approximately close to $800 a piece. Uh, and I don't have a problem with this. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm happy to do this. And they're talking about purchasing 30. Uh, and I think we need to look at however many people we got on patrol, if it's 30, 40, whatever. And we need to make sure every patrol officer at least have one of these. Uh, it, it protects several things. It helps several ways. It protects the police officer uh, from allegations. It also protects the citizens from uh, situations too. But the problem I have is there needs to be some teeth in this. If we're going to spend that kind of money for that type of equipment, that it needs to be sure that there is a requirement that they make sure they turn these on. You know, we can't have an officer getting out and getting in a confrontation and say he forgot it. You know, did he conveniently forget or did something happen that he didn't want to, to be seen or heard or whatever the case may be? And, and so there needs to be some repercussion to an officer who forgets to turn these on. If we're going to spend $800 for some equipment, it needs to be used. That's all I'm saying. And, and I don't know what this council can do, if anything, to uh, put some teeth in that. Uh, I know that's left up to the chief to do that. but. I think we need to look at that. If we're going to spend this kind of money for the equipment, we need to make sure that the equipment is used <coughs> and used at every opportunity. I hope I did that nice. Okay. Any other discussion? Clerk, you take the vote. Those in favor to adopt both resolutions, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt both. Is there any other new business? Department reports, committees, bond boards, are they? <coughs> Citizens request, Ariel Hall Jr. Is he available today? Yes, sir. Come on up here <laughs> to the microphone. He wants to comment on the alcohol advertising that we we pass. Give your name and address, please, to the city clerk. My name is Ariel Hall, Jr., and I live at 1183 Tuscaloosa Avenue. Okay. First, I would like to thank everybody for passing the law. It will make a really big difference for the kids and the youth now. now. And thank, it's, it's going to make a really big difference because peer pressure is a big issue nowadays, and now they can they, they don't have to worry about seeing so many alcohol advertisements as low as they were where kids this tall can see them like just facing for, towards them thank you for moving five feet high because it will make a big difference in the city 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, remarks by the mayor and the council. Mr. Uh, President, this is just a quick point. I'd like to thank that young man for expressing an interest in uh, in service. Uh, it's not not every young man your age that expresses an interest and in even an understanding of things of that nature. So thank you for that. <laughs> He just, happened, he just happened to be a relative of mine, that's why. We won't hold that against you. <laughs> we won't hold that against you. Sorry, son. We're sorry. We're sorry. That explains everything. Uh, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> Mayor, you want to start today? Uh, first, I'd, I'd like to, too, commend you. The word peer pressure, and for you mm -hmm. Cub Scouts here, uh, that is one of the worst things that you have growing up is uh, kids who want to do the right thing, make good grades, do what the teachers and the coaches and everybody says, uh, get harassed a lot from the ones who don't care about doing the right thing. And I think that's very, very good when you stand up and do the right thing like, like he did and you guys are too. You need to keep that in mind as you go. If you've if you got friends that want you to uh, buck the system and not do the right thing, you need to get some new friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say... Uh, <clears throat> make a couple of comments on uh, Highway 77 widening. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that has been going on for a long time trying to get that project done, and I will have to say that I was real pleased with the new highway director. You know, the, how, the state has a five-year plan, and you get on the list, but every time you get a new governor, you get a new plan. <laughs> so uh, that's not too good if you don't uh, have a governor that wants to be sort of fair about things. But anyway, the new high director, highway director I read an article, he went around to all the uh, highway projects that are on the map and uh, to decide which ones they wanted to start working on first. And Highway 77, a two-lane road, was the most highly traveled road, two-lane road in the state of Alabama. And I think there's around 28,000 cars a day go down there. So that's going to be very important to us. And along with the completion of Airport Road, Black Creek Parkway, uh, and now 77 widening project from Devan Low, it'll go all the way up to I-59. Uh, that's going to open up a lot of commercial and industrial possibilities for the cities of Rainbow City and Gadsden. It's a state-funded project, but uh, my office uh, have been, has been pushing this for a number of years because of the economic impact it will have, along with uh, Jerry Mabry, who was in my office, Senator Larry Means, Frankie Davis, who's over Economic Development and Governmental Affairs, and especially the city engineer, uh, Chad Hare, because he's really worked hard on that the last, uh, I say, well, I guess ever since you've been here, right, Chad? <laughs> but uh, that's going to be a good thing for everybody in the whole county, uh, not only the cities, and uh, if we can get that other section of Steel Station four-laned uh, from uh, Sutton Bridge Road to uh, uh, 77, that's really going to help the traffic process around here. And I guess that's all. So. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, it's good to see the Boy Scout troop here today. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, you guys have a, a lot to look forward to. And as long as you keep your motto in mind, you know, as you go through life, you'll be okay. You will be okay. Uh, troop 777, where are you, uh, where are you located? Cross. Cross Point Community Church, okay, okay, okay. Thank you all for being here. Uh, and the only other thing that I have is, uh, uh, Mayor, you talked about uh, Highway 77 being wide, and can you, can, can you get me something done about 759? <laughs> I tell you that that's the biggest joke. That's the biggest joke I've seen in my life, and uh, Ben told me to be careful. That's the biggest joke I've seen in my life, why we keep continue to just continue to delay and put it off. And Chad and I are just disappointed, you know, with what we see and what we hear when we have meetings with state highway people. But uh, uh, it's, it's coming one day, we hope. It's coming one day, we hope. That's all I have. That, uh, Highway uh, 759. Megan Boulevard and Highway 411 is just sort of out of our hands. Yes, yes it is. But we begged, uh, you know, those people, you know, in, in, in Congress, you know, uh, to give us a hand, you know, and see what they can do to expedite that. But it, it's uh, everything that we ask for is just fall, kind of falling on deaf ears. So we shall see. 
Well, if it's, in, if it's encouraging to you in any level, George Wallace uh, campaigned uh, in the 60s about a second bridge over the Coosa River, Coosa River. <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, 20 years later he got it. So I don't know how that helps you. <laughs> well, it's been 20 years, so we, we, <laughs> we, we ought to be there, but I'm afraid we're 20 more years out. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple quick items. Uh, did, did want to recognize, and I, I think many of us have seen it in the paper, but I wanted to take the opportunity uh, to recognize the young man in the East Gadsden, uh, Jordan Madden, I believe, who received the letter from uh, from the president. Yeah, did want to take the opportunity to recognize him, and uh, he uh, he took the initiative at seven to uh, to write a letter and uh, received uh, some information back from the president that he will that he will never forget so uh, so I think that's uh, that's to be that's that's commendable uh, do want to also make a comment uh, regarding the city finances we received uh, an update last week and um, again Gadsden continues to be fiscally responsible uh, had, a, had a young lady say to me this morning that you know the city seems to have plenty of money well mm -hmm. That the word plenty is relative. Uh, <laughs> let me and let me be clear about that. The word plenty is relative. Um, we are uh, rainy day prepared uh, in in the city of Gadsden, and I think that that needs to be the distinction between plenty versus uh, you know anything else that you can use to describe our financial situation. Um, you know we've been we've been trying uh, for for some time to be fiscally responsible, and there are a lot of things that we want to do and would like to do, uh, and some of it we are going to do. But uh, but again, there's a there's a balance, and I and I think again we, uh, as a city, have taken the opportunity to be rainy day prepared. So you know, please be mindful of that as you discuss the city's financial situation with others. Um, and uh, I think that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. I think the young people, particularly um, the Boy Scouts, picked a great day to be here. Uh, you can see your government. Uh, in action and how government works, but at the same time, uh, you can see how government is responsive to the citizens, and that's what we're here for. Ariel came to us a few weeks ago uh, with this issue about the alcoholic uh, advertising, alcoholic beverage advertising, and as you can see, a few weeks later, we have a resolution on the table to, to pass what he asked us to do, and, and that's how government should be. Government <laughs> should be responsive to the people that we, we represent, and that, that's why we're here. And so again, you picked a great meeting to, to come to to see your government uh, do what it's supposed to do. And again, Ariel, we thank you for your involvement and, and stay strong and, and keep up the good work. Um, uh, I think maybe by the time you get uh, a few more days, I'll be out and then you could be the next council member. We'll keep it in the family. <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, again. You can take over now here. <laughs> I know somebody wish, but anyway, uh, you know, uh, and, and that's what it's all about. We've got to be responsive to to the citizens and, and to the people that we represent. And I'm hoping again, and I, I, I reemphasize, because uh, I know we've had a problem over the years trying to get our civil service law changed. Uh, I brought up that issue a few minutes ago about the cameras. Uh, if we're going to spend that kind of money for equipment, it, it, it's there to protect. Uh, the officers and our citizens, but if they're not going to use it, then we're just wasting time and money, and I, I have a serious concern with that. But as a council and as an administration, we don't have any control over that. That's where I really have an issue, is that we're going to buy this equipment, give it to those officers, and then it's going to be up to somebody else to tell them that they need to use it. And if they use it, if they don't use it, they're going to be setting the consequences. And I think that's, that sends a bad message uh, to that department and to other em city employees. Uh, when there's a directive given by the mayor to other employees, then they answer directly to the mayor. If there's a directive from this council, a policy from this council to the police department, uh, if they do it, then good. If they don't, there ain't nothing we can do. Uh, because we have a civil service law that's an antiquated and outdated and needs to be changed. And I would hope that the citizens of this community would uh, get an uprising <coughs> to meet with our local legislative delegation to change that. There's, I think we're one of two cities in this entire state that have this system. Now, that ought to tell you something. If we're the only two cities in the state, if there's only two cities that have this type of system, there's something wrong with the system. 
Otherwise, there'll be a whole lot of cities with this system. And, and it's, it's one of those things you just can't get rid of because of politics. And when it comes down to protecting the citizens of this community, it shouldn't be left up to politics. It should be left up to protecting the citizens and not some political whim or somebody else's. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting off my soapbox. I just wanted to bring that to the attention again. Hopefully by the time the legislative delegate, I mean the next legislative session come, we'll get the delegation strong enough to pass that and take the police chief and the fire chief out from under the civil service law, not the officers. I want to be clear on that. We're talking about the administrative people. Yeah, I'd just like to welcome the Boy Scouts here this morning. It's good to see you young men out and, and uh, all of them heading on the right path with the stay with their oath. I want to commend uh, uh, Mr. Hall back there, well-spoken, well-mannered young man <laughs> that took up a cause, and uh, uh, that's great. I commend you for that. I might expand on what uh, Debrick said about uh, rainy day. I was talking to the mayor of uh, Tuscaloosa the other day, and, uh, uh, you know, the tornado that came through there, they said they had to, to take out $10 million out of their reserves to just survive through that, that uh, and that's probably not all, but... Uh, we have a little reserve, but it could be wiped out in a in a heartbeat. So it's something that we need to keep in reserve. So that's all I have. Yeah. Ben. Yeah. The Boy Scout. How many, how many of y'all are above tenderfoot? <laughs> Everybody. Well, I want to announce that I made it all the way to tenderfoot. <laughs> <laughs> I did. And if I can get here on tenderfoot, look what you can do with eagle. Now, really. <laughs> Well, why don't y'all stand up, turn around, and let your mama see you on TV. Take a sweep of y'all. Stand up, y'all. Turn around, and let's get y'all a good picture. Ben, while, 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 while they're watching TV, why can't we ask them to recite the Boy Scouts motto while they're on TV there? While we're doing it, too. Can y'all do that? Can you do that? That was a good idea, Billy. All right. Thanks, y'all. That was great, really. Uh, one thing I want to say about Wall Street and the mainstays over there, last week we did the Ritz Theater, but I want to commend the Alabama City Bank that's now, what, Wells Fargo? Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Uh, Jerry's Pharmacy, Old Clyde Dial's Antique Store, the Ritz Theater. These are people who have stayed. And this morning I want to kind of announce a new business that's going in out over there. Its tools are more on uh, Sansom and Wall Street. Y'all, Larry Cook's put up a pretty good store of tools, tools and everything over there. I like to announce new new businesses, Absolutely. and and Larry Cook's doing a great job. Y'all drop by there and, and see him and see what's going on. Old what kind of product is that, Dan? Huh? What kind of product does he have there? He's got all the assortment of tools, but tools. when you go in, he's got vacuum cleaners. Okay. He's got household stuff. Okay. It's, it looked like a real nice trade day. Oh, and to me, that's something else. <laughs> that's, a, that's saying a lot. That's saying but a lot. But if Larry ain't got it, come see Ben up at the longest trade thing on you know, <laughs> in August. On these lapel uh, cameras, we brought that in public safety, what, Billy? Robert, about two, three weeks ago, yeah. and discussed it then. And uh, he was talking about Ariel bringing up something two weeks ago and it becoming a reality. This is another one right here. And I commend him for doing this on his part. But uh, we brought this up. I saw it on TV. They said it was 60 bucks a piece. Well, that got my attention. I walked in this morning, they said it up to 800. <laughs> That's not a bad increase in three weeks. But anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off until uh, Mm -hmm. We see what kind of the burn grant goes through and all this sort of stuff, and we absolutely have the money in hand. Then I'm going to start running my toot about how they ought to be used and, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. But I'm looking forward to it, y'all. I think it's going to be a plus for the police department. I really yes. do. It's all right. Okay. Well, we've enjoyed having you all here this morning. And uh, are there any questions that anybody has? That there anything we did this morning that you didn't understand? Scouts. I'll get Robert to explain it to you. 
<laughs> let, let, let me, by the uh, way, his name is Robin. <laughs> let, let me say this. I've had a lot of, lot of citizens ask me, when are we going to pay uh, Megan Boulevard? Uh, we're not. That's a state project. <laughs> we don't have any control over it. But I've had so many people ask me, when is that going to be done? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Chad? Chad? Chad has an update on He has an answer. <laughs> Chad has an answer. But that's not a city project. It's a state project. It, we don't have any control over it. You have an idea? He can give Chad? us the answer that the state gave us last week. Yeah, yeah I think I told you about two or three months ago. It would be in four weeks. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, the last I heard, it, it was two or three months. They yeah. had to replace a lot more concrete slabs than they, they first expected when they yeah. took off the, the top layer. So they're having to do a lot more rehab. Is the is the reasons I'm getting. All right. Okay. Is that it? Okay. If there's not anything else, I'll entertain a motion. We adjourn. So moved. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>